What's uh, very unique uh, with the English language is the knowledge has not been hidden. And so we have an Oxford uh, complete uh, uh, dictionary. It's condensed, so this is it's a two volume set. Uh, it'd be almost 20 volumes if you had the full set. But it is the authority for the English language and, and how we use the English language. Now, we, we in the past had brought this out in a video, but we're just going to re clarify this again. The, the Christian name is clarified in Oxford's dictionary, and it gave some examples to understand this. So, under a Christian name in this Oxford uh, dictionary, it starts off, it says, Christian name, the name given at christening, the personal name as distinguished from the family name or surname. It says, very, very small print. I'll have to get this. Just bear with me here because this is extremely small print. I'm going to have to get my other magnifying glass here. When a man is made a spiritual peer, he loses his surname. When a temporal, his Christian name. Now, temporal means money. So when you've engaged in the money scene or the secular scene, you automatically, your Christian name is no longer seen. When you've gone down the spiritual journey, well then a man not serving mammon would shed his surname. So it's clear, even in the definitions out of the Oxford Dictionary, not to say that everybody's Oxford Dictionary has a complete information source as this, but it is there and it has not been hidden. And this is still available. So if you want to do your research, or maybe you can go to a public library where they may have more complete dictionary sets, but uh, definitely this, uh, uh, this compact edition of the Oxford uh, English Dictionary is available. Uh, we've even found these used online where, you know, some people were selling them for, you know, under $100 for the complete set. Uh, certainly it's more convenient to read out of a larger print out of a 20 volume set. Most people don't have space for 20 volumes, so the two volume set was much more uh, easy to store. But the information is there and so people really do need to do their research. And therefore, when you're reviewing these videos, why don't you get the dictionaries after you see or hear a word that we're uh, in a discussion on, look it up for yourself. Take the time. Do your own due diligence. Uh, read God's Word. You're, if you're reading out of the English version of the Bible, if you're reading out of the King James, well, then you're reading in English. So shouldn't you know what the words mean? Well, of course you should. So take the time to educate yourself. Knowledge is important, especially proper knowledge. If you don't know what your proper name is, you will not understand the property. Dan, can you just go back in there for one second? Um, Reread that part that we haven't done on the camera about the origin of the Christian name under King. Oh, okay. This will take a moment to find again, but okay. it's well worthwhile. So start with that. We're just going to take a. I'll take that back with me it. and I'll scan it and if I, I'll see if I can post it as well. But uh, let's get it on video while we're at it. The giving of surnames for Christian names began at the time of King Edward VI. And then right after that, it stated, When a man is made a spiritual peer, he loses his surname. When a temporal, or what we're dealing with money, his Christian name. Very clear. Certainly not violating scripture. Scripture said in Matthew 6.24, not serve God and mammon, not serve the two together. So Jesus even told the rich man to 
in order to enter the kingdom of God, the best thing he could do was to dispose of all his wealth, then come follow him. So man's wealth, man's fiction, is held under the surname on that journey. In order to truly walk as a Christian with your proper Christian name, you would not require the surname. And there is no law requiring that for a man to carry that surname. But certainly in the world of commerce, you require it under positive law in order to manage what goes on with that money and to be under the duty, debt, and obligation that comes with the use of that name that represents money. So therefore, Caesar has not violated you. You have actually stepped into the world of a jurisdiction that has extinguished out your Christian God-given rights.